Shalom family. So this morning I want to share with you just where I was reading. And I'm reading in the book of Jonah at the moment. There's a lot of connections for us with Jonah, Jonah and the upcoming eclipse. And I am busy working on a decent video bringing all the masses of information together for you, which I will release sometime soon. So Jonah is read in Israel around the time of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And it is about repentance. That is why they read it at the time of Yom Kippur. Jonah's name means dove. All right. So it's an important one. It's a really good book to read. I'd encourage you to read it now. It's short enough for you to read in one sitting and then to sit and just digest and read through it again with the Holy Spirit and let him guide you through this book. So Jonah receives this word from the Lord to go to a place called Nineveh. So Nineveh historically and biblically is built by a man called Nimrod. Genesis 10 verse 9 to 12 says he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said like Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, Kalne in the land of Shinar. <clears throat> Out of that land he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Reobos, Ir, Kala, and Resen, between Nineveh and the great city of Kala. So that's Nimrod. Nimrod is the great-grandson of Noah. So as in the days of Noah, the flood, and we're bringing it all to the sign of Jonah, and we're talking about the days of Lot as well when we look at the end times. So great-grandson of Noah, a lot of people say that his name means hunter, all right. His name in the Hebrew can be taken to the original Semitic root, which translates as Marat, which means to rebel. So ideally, he who rebelled against God and went and established all these kingdoms for himself. I, 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 almost a Luciferian outlook and approach in the world. I will be great. I will be honored. I will be glorified. He's rebelling. That is his name. And that person built Nineveh. So that just gives you a little bit of a, a base of the historic situation around what's happening here. So now let's turn to the Word of God. Jonah, and I'm not going to read all of it, I'm going to read a portion just to guide you into it. From verse 1. Now the Word of the Yahweh came to Jonah the son of Amittai. All right, now Amittai in Hebrew, that's now his father, Amittai, means my truth. Okay? Now the word of Yahweh came to Jonah, the son of my truth, right? Saying, arise, go to Nineveh. Nineveh translates as Ninus place, which could be an ode to Nimrod, or fish place. Interesting, again. Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah. Many times in the Bible we have but God moments. I was down and out and struggling. I didn't see any way to get through the problems before me. But God. The devil came and destroyed. But God. The enemy sought to, to kill me. But God. We have all these but God moments where God arrests things. And changes it because he is God. Here we have a but Jonah. God has called him and given him an order. Go and do this thing. But Jonah. But the flesh. And many times in life when God wants us to do something. Or he guides us. Or he gives us a mission. And he puts something on your heart. Go and do this thing. I've put this on your heart. But you. Your flesh. You're rebelling like Nimrod against God. That comes up very quickly. That is why Paul had to say, I die daily. He had to kill the flesh daily and submit to God in all things. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He wanted to flee from the presence of the Lord. 
we're living in a time and also thanks to Jesus and the relationship he's drawn us into that we want to flee into the presence of the Lord. And when we do enter the presence of the Lord and when he arrives in a room and when he comes in, you feel his presence powerfully and you want to stay there forever. We want the presence of God. It is where we are safe. It is where we belong. It is like a magnet pulling to a magnet. They belong together. You absolutely are in the best place if you are in the presence of the Lord. Yet, due to his flesh and rebellion, he wanted to flee from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Yaffa. Yopa in the Bible, Yaffa. Yaffa means beautiful. And, and it is... It's beautiful. Um, one of the things I did when I was in Israel back in the day is I made my way down to Yaffa. That actual port where Jonah fled from the presence of God is still there to this day, exactly the way it was in the days of Jonah. I walked all the way out on that outer retaining wall to the very end by the sea and stood there where his boat would have left, exactly where Jonah fled from the presence of the Lord. It is surreal. To see and to look out over the waters and think, here he went from the presence of the Lord. And behind me is the land of Israel and Yaffa. He went down to Yaffa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So twice now, emphasizing he wants to get away from the presence of the Lord, which is really sad. And then Tarshish means the sea coast. So the seas and the oceans very much depict in the Bible the nations, right? The many peoples. He was fleeing to the peoples. He wanted to go and hide himself from God's presence, away from God's people, where God was, in the nations where God's not going to find him. Really, the flesh rebelling and talking here with no understanding or wisdom. And the interesting thing here that I want to point out to you is he found a ship going to the sea coast, Tarshish, and he paid the fare. When God guides you, when God gives you a mission, God provides. Where God guides, God provides. When you go against what God wants, and you go where you want to go. You pay the fare. And when he stepped into sin too. This is sin. Fleeing the presence of God. Refusing to do what God has told him to do. He's sinning. He paid the price. He paid it. There was a cost involved. By choice. Remember that. He paid the fare. And he went down into it. You go down. When you flee from the presence of God, you're not moving up. You're moving down. And down is not good. It gets worse from there all the way in. You are fleeing from the presence of God down into darkness from the presence of the Lord. And that is just ridiculous. And then again, we'll carry on with the rest of the story at another time. But what Jonah was not thinking about at all is if you go to Psalm 139 verse 7 to 12, it says the following. Where can I go from your spirit, your Ruach? Where? Where can I flee from your presence? Jonah was trying to flee from the presence of God. Where can I flee from your presence? So here we go. They're going to give Jonah some tips now. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell or Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, take a ship and flee to the sea coast, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to you. We fear nothing. 
because God is with us. No matter where we get taken, no matter where the world pushes us, no matter how the enemy attacks, the presence of God is with us. He will be with us everywhere. There is nowhere you can be taken that the Lord will not be able to arrest and be in that situation. He is with you always, even unto the end of the age. It's a promise. We don't want to flee the presence of God. We want to rest in His presence. We want to soak up His presence. We want to be covered by His wings. Constantly and forever, no matter where we are. So learn those lessons. Don't be like Jonah. Operating in the flesh, fleeing from the presence of God, walking in rebellion and ending up in a place built by a son of rebellion to go and fulfill his mission. And in the process, like a two-edged sword, the word of God working on Jonah as well as the people of Nineveh. And again, in a, in a longer video, we'll delve deeper into it and the entire story. But just that so far on how God is in control always and how we should walk in the spirit with him and draw near to him every day he seeks an intimate relationship with each and every one of us and there's nothing better so spend time in the word spend time in prayer and supplication making your needs known to god he already knows them communicate with him praise him glorify him shine for him even if you think you don't have that ability as a person you can in all sorts of ways without speaking you can wear things that can speak of your god you can mention things about god you can push back when people blaspheme in your presence there's many ways you can start conversations leading people to the truth stand up and be counted as one of his own because we don't have a lot of time left and it is an exciting time to be alive. Is it difficult? Yes. Is it horrifying? Yes. Is the darkness overwhelming everywhere around us? Yes. All over the place. As I sit and share these news stories with you, it's not to depress you or sadden you or anything. It's to keep you awake and alert and excited. Because as much as it's a terrible story to hear that everybody's getting ready to launch nukes at each other, it's exciting because we're about to leave. We are not destined for us. We know these things because we are resting in His presence. We are not fleeing from His presence. We are not operating in rebellion. We are not walking in the flesh. We are walking in the Spirit. We are submitting to God because He occupies the throne in our lives as it should be. We count all things loss for that which we have gained in Christ Jesus. God bless. Have a fantastic day. Pray for each other. Support each other. And let's run this race together. Shalom.